that was a short one, but we're back with the War of the Seder. Initially, the night elves suffered terrible losses from the satyr's assaults. Yet the tide of battle soon changed when Taranda's adopted daughter, the captain of the Sentinels, Chandris Feathermoon, proposed a new strategy to fight the demons. She suggested that the druids be called from their sojourns in the Emerald Dream so they could be used as a fighting force. Upon seeing how Zalan had corrupted the Night Elves' forests, Malfurion agreed to Chandris's request and summoned the most powerful druids of Kalimdor to his side. As one, the druids and sentinels struck into the heart of satyr territory. Chandras's brilliant guerrilla maneuvers led the night elves to overcome many of their enemies, including Zalan himself. But while the night elves made gains in the war, a new threat emerged from within their ranks. Before we talk about that, let's go about Chandra's Feathermoon, who I actually don't know that much about. The Sentinels included a number of Night Elves who had fought bravely during the War of the Ancients. Chief among them was Chandra's Feathermoon. Orphaned during the Legion's invasion, she was taken under Taronda's care. Young Chandra's distinguished herself in combat time and again throughout the conflict. Her heroics earned her a place at Taronda's side thereafter, and when the Sentinels were forged, Chandris was named Captain of the Fledgling Order. Hmm. So, while the Night Elves made gains in the war, a new threat emerged from within their ranks, a group of wayward druids seeking to harness the fury of the wild god Goldrin. had adopted savage wolf forms. So this is the origin of the worgen. There we go. Led by Rilar Fangfire, these druids became known as worgen. Rilar and his ferocious companions were slaves to their own rage, and they tore through friend and foe alike amid battle. Night elves, bitten by the wolf beasts, contracted a virulent curse that transformed them into worgen as well. The worgen catastrophe forced Malfurion to reflect on the state of druidism. Without some form of regulation, he concluded that individuals like Rilar would inevi inevitably go too far in their application of druidic power. Malfurion and his followers therefore created the Cenarian Circle, a harmonious order that would guide and keep watch over the world's druids and their practices. The Cenarian Circle's first great task was to deal with the worgen threat. Seeing no other recourse, Malfurion reluctantly banished Rilar and his worgen to the Emerald Dream. There Malfurion believed that they went, would enter a peaceful, eternal slumber beneath the enchanted tree known as Deral Nir. After the Worgen's banishment, any hope the satyrs had of achieving victory was lost. The Night Elves cut deep into their enemy's domain until most of the forests had been cleansed of corruption. The few remaining satyrs retreated into the shadows. Never again would they pose so great a threat to Night Elf society. Exile of the High Elves in the centuries after the Sundering, the surviving Highborn attempted to assimilate in the new Night Elf society, yet many of them struggled to do so. They found the temptation to delve into arcane magic irresistible, despite the strict laws banning sorcery. Over time, these Highborn were warned again and again to stop meddling with the otherworldly powers. The penalty for repeat offenders was death. Despite this extreme punishment, the Highborn could not stop. The call of arcane energy was simply too strong to ignore. A revered Highborn elf named Dathramar Sunstrider chafed at the restrictions and punishments that weighed on his kind. He eventually proclaimed that arcane power was the birthright of the Highborn and that anyone who feared it was a coward. He and his followers began to practice the arcane arts without fear or restraint, daring the other night elves to act. For Dathramar and the other highborn, using arcane magic was more than just an act of rebellion. 
they had always believed that night elves were destined for greatness. Though these highborn did not wholly condone the evils of Azshara, they knew in their bones that night elf society could once again flourish into a mighty empire. Yet to do so, they would need to revive the study and use of arcane power. The highborn's reckless defiance was as sudden as it was startling. In the end, the other night elves could not bring themselves to sentence so many of their brothers and sisters to death. Instead, they barred the highborn from setting foot on Hyjal ever again. Dathramar and his followers were exiled, cut off from the Well of Eternity's energies. Most of the highborn happily accepted their banishment. They were finally free of the other night elves' constraints. Under Dathramar's guidance, the highborn built a fleet of mighty ships. They then set sail, leaving Kalimdor for whatever lands might lie beyond the churning maelstrom. The Highborn's determination was rewarded when they made landfall on a new continent some years later. This region, filled with lush wildlife and woodlands, would one day become known as the Eastern Kingdoms. The Highborn traveled on foot for months before finally settling in a place marked by a strange silver hand. A land called Tirisfall by tribes of primitive humans that inhabited the area. Initially, these humans rarely interacted with the Highborn, yet as time passed, they began to tell legends of a brave, metal-skinned guardian named Tyr, who had sacrificed himself to kill a monstrous foe in Tirisfall. Indeed, the Highborn detected potent lay energies in the land, energies that the primitive humans could not detect. It was no well of eternity, but the lingering supernatural presence intrigued the experienced arcane practitioners. Some elves speculated that, in time, they could unlock its secrets and restore themselves to their former glory. They were desperate to succeed quickly. After being exiled from the Well of Eternity, the Highborn began to feel the effects of aging and disease. Their skin had even lost its violet hue, and they had begun to shrunk, shrink in stature. The Highborn feared that the effects would only worsen over time. Led by Dathramar, the Highborn made a new life in Tirisfall Glades. For a time, they dwelt in peace and reveled in their independence. Yet as they tapped into the area's latent magic, they found shades of dark energy. These shadowy powers drove some of the Highborn to madness. They began to argue that the humans had built their settlement atop the most potent ley lines in the region. Therefore, the Highborn should force them to relocate, or even conquer the primitive beings outright. Dathramar did not agree. He had no wish to war against a people who posed no threat to his kind. The wise leader had also sensed the dark energies radiating from the land. He theorized that they might be responsible for the sudden rise of belligerence and madness that was afflicting the highborn. Ultimately, Dathramar chose to lead his people away from Tirisfall to avert violence and spare them from further calamity. He decided that they would try to make a new home in the north. There, Dathramar's scouts had discovered a region rife with lush forests and powerful lay energies. Intent on reaching this land, the beleaguered highborn struck out north and into the unknown. The Sunstrider Dynasty Dathramar Sunstrider hailed from a long line of illustrious highborn, all of whom had served the Night Elf throne. Their namesake was something of an oddity among their moon-worshipping race. Dathramar's ancestors had chosen Sunstrider to symbolize their penchant for delving into the unknown, for breaking expectations and throwing caution to the wind in their search for greatness. Like his bold progenitors, Dathramar carried on this tradition with pride. The Long Vigil The exile of the Highborn ended a tenuous chapter in Night Elf history. Yet even so, Tyrande and Malfurion found no time to rest. Malfurion and the Cenarian Circle busied themselves with upholding the balance of nature and healing lands still polluted with demonic corruption. Much of this they did in unison with Ysera and her green dragonflight, deep within the twisting pathways of the Emerald Dream. Malfurion and the other druids slumbered for decades at a time, their dream forms wandering Ysera's realm. Tyrande, 
Chandris, and the Sentinels maintained their guardianship over the Night Elf's domain. They patrolled the forests without rest, ever wary of another demonic resurgence. Their efforts resulted in a long-sought period of peace and tranquility. Life in the forests and thickets of Hyjal thrived. In time, the enchanted keepers of the grove and woodland dryads emerged from the secluded moonglade. The night elves revered these creatures, for they were Cenarius' own sons and daughters. Their presence in the wilds of Ashenvale was seen as an omen of better times to come. Along with the keepers of the grove and the dryads, other creatures appeared in the open with greater frequency. The wise treants, the elusive fairy dragons, and the mythical chimera all began roaming the forests near night elf holdings. In the centuries to come, the night elves would foster strong bonds with these fey creatures and call on them in times of need. With Malfurion in the dream, the task of governing the daily activities of the night elves fell to Tyrande. The mantle of leadership was demanding, but she enjoyed it. Yet despite the hope and optimism that blossomed among the night elves, Tyrande could not shake the feeling that dire times were ahead. They had banished the Burning Legion, but they had not killed Sargeras. Tyrande believed with all her heart that the fallen titan was somewhere out in the darkness between the stars, plotting another attack. Perhaps it was only a matter of time before Sargeras renewed his burning crusade to decimate all life. And if that day did come, Tyrande hoped she and her people would be ready for it. I'm going to stop there. We'll see you next time.